With summer just around the corner, naturally we all start to feel that bit more positive about our riding. And if that puts you in the mindset to splash some cash on some new kit in readiness for those rides and maybe even events in the warmer weather, then here's how to dress for success, look pro, and most importantly, maximize the versatility of your cycling wardrobe. But before we delve in, do take a second to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already, and also maybe click the notifications icon so you'll be informed every time we upload new and exciting content. The basis of choosing an outfit should be first and foremost to consider how it works together as a system, not just a bunch of individual items you happen to wear all together. And that starts with those layers directly in contact with your skin. The base layer then can be a vital piece of kit and they have evolved into some of the most highly technical garments. Most now will be constructed from fabrics with open yarns to increase their breathability whilst also being able to wick away moisture rapidly. Also make sure you get something that's really form fitted because a baggy base layer is just not going to be able to do its job as well. And it can make or break your ride in terms of your comfort if you get it wrong. When it comes to choosing a base layer, the style you go for really depends on a few things, one of which is simply your personal preference, but there are also a few practical considerations that might help make your decision. Cold shoulders under a summer weight jersey can actually be a real thing if you start out on a chilly ride, perhaps with arm warmers and a gilet. So in this case, a short sleeve base layer would be preferred over the vest style. However, do consider the type of jersey you're wearing. There's little point going all super slick and aero on the fit of your jersey if you end up with a rucked up base layer sleeve ruining the gun show. Some of the more specific summer jerseys are only a little bit removed from being a base layer with a zip and pockets ultimately. So with that full zip too, you do get the option to be able to adjust the level of cooling and breathability. However, it is true that with the latest jersey fabric developments, moving away from such high lycra and nylon content into more open weave polyesters, then it is possible to get that evaporation directly from the skin just wearing a jersey. So I guess the jury is still out on this one. If you want to maximize the versatility of any cycling outfit, then there are some key accessories that should be a staple of any cyclist's wardrobe. I'm talking about arm warmers, knee warmers, gilets, gloves, and even perhaps a lightweight packable jacket. Just because it's summer doesn't mean you shouldn't always be prepared for changeable weather, especially in the UK. Let's start with the arm warmers. They may all look similar, but all are not created equal. At this time of year, you should look for lighter versions that are more suited to the warmer temperatures. They will be more breathable and also importantly, easier to stow in a pocket as you'll potentially be more likely to want to whip them off mid-ride. The same goes for a gilet. You want it to be almost unnoticeable, lightweight, form-fitting, definitely not noisy and flappy, but equally you want to be able to appreciate its benefits in terms of the extra layer of defense. Knee warmers are another often debated piece of kit. A wise man once told me, if it's cold enough for sleeves, it's cold enough for knees. A nod to the fact we should definitely be protecting and looking after those crucial joints if it's chilly. But not everyone would agree. Some buy into that full length legs or shorts and nothing in between mentality. Although that's usually those hardcore Belgians or people that care more about their early season tan lines. My advice would be to make the call based on the intensity of your riding. If you're racing or doing high intensity workouts, you may want to look for lighter weight alternatives or perhaps ditch the knees completely. Now we can't have a discussion about cycling clothing without talking about the sock game. Socks are a crucial, if not the most important kit choice of all. But sock length is also a very hotly debated topic. So whether you're in the Mathieu van der Poel socks halfway up the calves, or this was good enough for Mercs and Copy old school camp, regardless, just make sure of one thing. Your socks at least need to match something. Shoes, ideally, as that's what they're closest to, but at least your glasses or helmet or something to tie up the whole outfit choice. Which brings me nicely onto my final point, dress codes. There are some key rules to follow. And of those, golden rule number one is absolutely no skin gaps between your arm warmers and jersey or between your knee warmers and your shorts. But remember, there does need to be that skin gap between your socks and the bottom of your knee warmers. Rule number two then is any spare garments such as jackets or gilets that you're stowing away in a jersey pocket ideally should be put in the central pocket and definitely not left hanging out and flapping in the wind. Whether you do or don't wear gloves is of course up to you, and glove choice can be such a personal thing. 
but I would say unless there is a specific reason for you to need lots of extra padding on the palm of your glove, then go for something quite minimalist and thin because that will give you the best opportunity to retain all that sensitivity and feel with the bars. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do give us a thumbs up and why not check out some of the other videos on our channel as well as heading over to cyclist.co.uk for all the latest news, tech and in-depth product and bike reviews. And for that, the link will pop up on the screen now or it's in the description below. Thanks for watching.